Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about ultrasound evaluation of Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease, which mainly affects the terminal ileum and the colon, but it can affect any part of the gastrointestinal tract. It cannot be cured, but it can be managed and has active and inactive phases. First, we will look at which lab findings can appear abnormal in Crohn's disease. Some of them are more specific. In such patients, CRP, ESR, white blood cells, and platelets can be elevated. Anemia may occur in cases of bleeding and chronic disease. Albumin levels may be lowered. Vitamins and minerals such as vitamin B12, vitamin D, iron folate, calcium, and magnesium may be reduced. However, these are not specific for Crohn's disease. Fecal markers are more specific. Fecal calprotectin can be elevated in intestinal inflammation. It is highly sensitive. Fecal lactoferrin is another neutrophil-derived marker which can be elevated in active disease. Now we will compare the normal images of the bowel with bowel affected by Crohn's disease. First, we will look at the normal bowel. This is the normal terminal ileum in the longitudinal plane. In this image, we can see the five distinct layers. This is the innermost layer. It is echogenic and called the superficial mucosa. It is also called the mucosal and lumen interface. The second layer is hypoechoic and is called the deep mucosa or muscularis mucosa. The third layer is the echogenic submucosa. The fourth layer is hypoechoic and called the muscularis propria. This is the muscularis propria. And the final layer is the outermost echogenic serosa. The innermost and outermost layers are echogenic and the layers have an alternating echogenic and hypoechoic pattern. The image on the right shows an ileum affected by Crohn's disease. In Crohn's disease, the bowel wall thickness will be greater than 3 millimeters. Usually the terminal ileum, the cecum, and ascending colon are affected. Wall stratification refers to the layered appearance of the bowel wall. Normally, we should be able to see the separate layers of the bowel when it's empty. Loss of wall stratification means we will not see the distinct layers of the bowel. In acute cases of Crohn's disease, wall stratification may be preserved, but in chronic inflammation, as in this image, we see increased wall thickness and loss of wall stratification. We do not see the separate layers properly. Instead, we see a thick, hypoechoic, and heterogeneous layer. Some areas may appear normal, but in these areas, the bowel wall has an abnormal appearance. Another feature is the presence of hyperechoic prominent fat surrounding the bowel loop. This is often called creeping fat. You can see this fat layer appearing very hyperechoic. It presents in such a way that it almost looks like a solid mass next to the bowel. Normally, we will not see this prominent fat layer next to the bowel. Here is another case of Crohn's disease. We can see a thickened wall and there is loss of wall stratification. We do not see the layered appearance of the bowel wall. In this image, you can see increased wall thickening along with loss of wall stratification. And you can also see prominent hyperechoic creeping fat surrounding the bowel loop. In some cases of Crohn's disease, you may find enlarged mesenteric lymph nodes next to the bowel loop. Here, we can see three enlarged hypoechoic lymph nodes. The bowel wall is thickened and there is loss of wall stratification. On color Doppler, the bowel wall will show increased vascularity, 
we will see multiple Doppler signals in the bowel wall. Normally, we do not see any color Doppler signals in the bowel wall. This increased vascularity indicates active inflammation. This image shows the normal ileum in the transverse plane. The normal wall thickness should be less than 3 millimeters. And this image shows the thickened wall. This bowel loop is surrounded by hyperechoic solid appearing fat. This is called creeping fat. This image is of the sigmoid colon in the longitudinal plane. The normal colon is difficult to see on ultrasound. In the image on the right, we see a sigmoid colon with increased wall thickness in a patient with Crohn's disease. In this case, the wall stratification is preserved. We can somewhat see the layers separately. Creeping fat is present. Now you will learn about two systems which classify Crohn's disease based on the severity. The first system, which is more commonly used, is the Limburg score. This system mainly focuses on the color Doppler vascularity. In a normal bowel, the wall thickness will be less than 3 millimeters. There will be no loss of wall stratification and no bowel wall vascularity, so this is given a Limburg score of grade 0. 0 is normal. In grade 1, the wall thickness will be greater than 3 millimeters and there can be partial loss of wall stratification but there will be no Doppler signals seen in the bowel wall. No vascularity will be detected. In grade 2, wall thickness will be greater than 3 millimeters, and there will be a few Doppler signals noted in the bowel wall. The wall stratification looks preserved, but we can see some color Doppler signals, so this is why it is given a score of grade 2. In grade 3, the vascularity is stronger than grade 2. You can see a significant number of Doppler signals. However, some areas still don't show increased vascularity. Some areas are spared, so it is classified as grade 3. Grade 4 is the most severe form. You will find increased vascularity in the bowel wall and increased vascularity in the surrounding hyperechoic mesenteric fat. Color Doppler signals are not only seen in the bowel wall, but also in the mesenteric fat. The simple ultrasound activity score for Crohn's disease is a validated scoring system developed to non-invasively assess Crohn's disease activity using ultrasound. It emphasizes two easily measurable, reproducible ultrasound parameters, bowel wall thickness and color Doppler signals. This system is helpful in follow-ups and monitoring of Crohn's disease. Its first parameter is bowel wall thickness. It is scored segment by segment, which means the score for terminal ileum is calculated separately from the score of colon. The score ranges from 0 to 3 points. If wall thickness is below 3 millimeters, the score is 0, it is normal. One point is given if bowel wall thickness is between 3 and 4.9. Two points are given if the thickness is between 5 and 7.9 millimeters, and three points are given if the thickness is greater than or equal to 8 millimeters. The second parameter is color Doppler signal. A score of 1 is given if the color Doppler signal is only seen in less than half the circumference of the bowel loop in the transverse image of the intestine. This is a transverse image, and if this is the entire circumference of the ileum, the Doppler signals are only seen in the upper half of this circumference. This part is half the circumference. Color Doppler signals are actually seen in less than half the circumference. So for this much vascularity, one point is given. 
In this case, the Doppler signals are seen almost throughout the entire circumference, so two points will be given in such an appearance. Two point are given for increased Doppler signal in more than half the circumference on a transverse image. Each segment is evaluated and scored separately. The bowel thickness and the color Doppler signals are evaluated for the ilium. Then these two parameters are evaluated again for the colon. For each segment, both the scores are added. The bowel wall thickness score is added with the color Doppler signal score to get a total score, which ranges from 0 to a maximum of 5. You can also add the total scores for each segment together to get an overall disease activity measure. Usually five segments can be evaluated if their visualization is possible. In many cases, it can be difficult to scan the colon due to the presence of gas and also its visualization is based on the patient size. This is the total score interpretation, meaning this score is the sum of the score of bowel wall thickness and the color Doppler signal thickness. If it is 0 or 1, it indicates normal or very mild disease. If it is 2 to 3, it indicates moderate disease. And if the score is 4 or 5, it indicates severe active disease. Now let's look at an example where we use the SUSCD system to evaluate Crohn's disease. This is the sigmoid colon in the longitudinal plane. The bowel wall thickness is 7 millimeters. Since this bowel wall thickness is between 5 and 7 millimeters, it is given two points. This is the ilium. Although it is not the same case as the previous image, we are just creating a scenario for our understanding. Now, the color Doppler signals in this example are seen in less than half the circumference. The CDS score will be 1. So two points for bowel wall thickness because it was 7 millimeters and one point for color Doppler signal. We add these two scores to get a total score of 3. This indicates moderate activity, moderate disease. Here is another example. In this case, the bowel wall thickness is 8 millimeters, so it gets 3 points in the bowel wall thickness category. 3 points are given if BWT is greater than or equal to 8 millimeters. There is very strong vascularity seen throughout the bowel wall, so if we scan this loop, in the transverse plane, we will get Doppler signals in more than half its circumference. So it gets two points in the CDS category. Final score will be 3 plus 2 equal to 5. This is the highest possible score in this system. It indicates severe active disease. In chronic and severe cases of Crohn's disease, fistulas can form. On ultrasound, they may appear as hypoechoic tracts between the bowel loops, bladder, skin, or other structures. Their visualization on ultrasound can be difficult. Abscesses may occur as well in such cases. An abscess usually appears as either hypoechoic or anechoic collection with irregular walls and heterogeneous areas. A stricture may also occur in some cases. It refers to the presence of a dilated bowel segment just before the bowel segment affected by Crohn's disease. The dilated bowel may have a diameter greater than 3 cm or 30 mm. This segment is seen just before the segment with increased wall thickness and loss of wall stratification. It is often called prestenotic dilatation. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.